Uttara, you have worked extensively on this uh, uh, concept of behavioral nudges and uh, you've done it uh, across countries. Is there any comparison that you would like to draw or tell us what, what should one learn or not learn? Good question. I think behavior is actually very complicated, human behavior. I think we behave irrationally, mostly. So there's a whole science to studying behavior called behavioral science. Just like doctors study medicine, behavioral scientists study behavior. So oftentimes communicating it is a science and an art. And I think across countries, the similarity that I've found is entertainment education is a very effective tool. So when you move people from, you know, just knowledge, knowledge to approval, approval to, you know, practice, and then practice to sustain practice when it becomes a habit, um, all of these stages can happen very systematically if you design programs around it. And just like Sonali was saying with um, puppets, with uh, entertainment through film, through so many other sources, Entertainment is something people in every country love. And it's a great way to bring behavioral nudges and behavioral changes and even habit creation. Um, so I think there's a commonality in, in the way we can approach behavior, but it has to be systematic and scientific. Um, we, I think what we tend to do is we design medical clinical programs and tend to put out a poster or a leaflet and then say we've done communication. And as we all know, especially those of us sitting here, communication doesn't happen one time. You have to repeat it many times, remind people, give them different ways of but finding things and so Amitabh on. What asked earlier is that should you use fear or should you avoid fear or whatever works? Like when we were kids, when he was a kid, not long ago, people used to say if you do this, the big bear will come and you, so then kids. But is fear a bad thing to use or whatever works? Fear is not a bad thing, but it has to be balanced with something we call self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, your ability to do something for the fear. So when you have too much fear, the theories we have show us that you tend to ignore the risk. Like when you put cigarette packet warnings, you see it's so much fear without giving people the tools to overcome that fear. Right? <laughs> I just feel one of the reasons why this is being so effective is that they know and they've been told. Yeah, and the consequences. The consequences. consequences of, but it's uh, important to know. The fear is very important. You're right, yeah. sir. Because, you know, unless people mm. think it's a real threat, mm. they're not going to do anything about it. So for COVID, for example, when it first came in, we all thought it won't happen to me. It's not a big deal. It's happening only in China. And once we started to think that it's going to happen to me, then you started to feel the fear is real. Then you say this fear, this could happen to me. Then you start to think, what tools do I have to protect myself? So if we don't give people protection tools or behaviors and instead keep the fear very high, the chances are you tend to ignore the fear and put it away. This won't happen. Heart attacks, all the non-communicable new diseases, if people don't feel the threat and the fear without the balance of self-efficacy, they're going to just say, oh, this is not going to happen to me and forget about it.